Before anyone even visits your site, they'll usually see three things. The page title, a short description, and the URL. That little preview they see in search results is the first impression they have of your site, and it plays a big role in whether someone clicks or keeps scrolling. These details aren't just about SEO. They also shape how people see your brand and whether they trust what you're offering. The good news is Framer makes it easy to update all of them. So in this lesson, we'll walk you through exactly how to do it. Let's start with the most visible and arguably the most important part of your page metadata, the title. Your page title is the headline that shows up in search results and browser tabs and is usually the first thing people see. So it needs to be clear, relevant, and to the point. Your title should include a main keyword or phrase, make it obvious what the page is about, and stay under 60 characters so it doesn't get cut off. For example, instead of something generic like home followed by the name of the brand, a better title would be something more specific and clear about the website or brand itself. A well-written title with a clear keyword improves the chances of ranking higher in search results, as well as increasing the chances that someone will actually engage with your site. When formulating a page title, it's best to try to think like your audience. What would they search for to find this page? One simple way to find out is by typing ideas right into a search engine like Google and checking what autocomplete suggests, or by looking at the related searches at the bottom. For deeper research, there are tools out there that can show you what real people are searching for, but overall we wanna aim for specific phrases that clearly match the content. These are called long tail keywords, and they're more likely to bring in the right audience. With that understanding, we can go ahead and update our page title in Framer by heading to the Pages panel to the left, hovering over the page name, and clicking the ellipsis. Then we'll choose Settings to open the page settings. At the top, we'll see all three fields we're covering in this lesson, but for now, we'll just update the title field. Framer even gives us a preview of what the title, description, and URL would look like in search results. Next, let's talk about descriptions the short blurb that appears under the title in search results. Descriptions don't directly impact your search rankings, but they do influence whether someone clicks. Think of them as an elevator pitch, a quick, clear summary of what the page offers. Keep it to one or two sentences, include relevant keywords naturally, and give users a reason to click. A bad description might look something like this. Welcome to our homepage. Click to learn more about what we do. It's vague, tells the user nothing specific, and doesn't give them any reason to engage. A better version looks more like this. Plan, track, and automate your team's work all in one smart platform designed for remote teams who move fast. It's clear, action-oriented, and actually tells the user what they'll find on the page. All right, so last piece of the puzzle for this lesson, URLs. Outside of the homepage of our site, Framer automatically creates URLs for each page based on the name we give it when it's first created. So if we name a new page about us, the slug becomes slash about hyphen us by default. Framer uses hyphens between words in the URL because search engines treat hyphens as word separators, which makes URLs easier to read and index. Luckily, Framer takes care of this for us and replaces any spaces with hyphens and makes sure our URLs are always lowercase, which is also preferred. But even though Framer handles the formatting, it's still up to us to make sure the slug is meaningful and specific. A good URL should be short, clear, and descriptive. So instead of this, we want something more like this. To change our URL, We'll go back to the page settings and update the URL field. Or alternatively, we can simply rename the page from the pages panel on the left. Both fields are connected, so changing it in one place will automatically update the other. Once updated, we'll see a full preview of how our page appears in search results, complete with title, description, and the updated URL. 
And if we have a page that we don't want indexed by search engines, like a private client review page or a hidden prototype, you can disable indexing for this page entirely by unchecking the show page in search engines checkbox right above our preview. Now let's quickly talk about how users will move through your site, especially those navigating with keyboard or other assistive technology. By default, browsers use a logical flow to determine tab order, usually based on the layout and structure of the page, but sometimes that natural flow isn't ideal, especially when custom components or nested layouts are involved. For this, we have tab index. In Framer, we can control how elements are reached by using the tab key by assigning a tab index in the accessibility section of the properties panel. So first, I'll select an element on my canvas to apply it to, then under accessibility, I'll click the plus icon and select tab index. By default, Framer will add a value of one, but what does that actually mean? Well, let's break it down. A value of zero means the element is part of the normal tab flow, while a value of negative one removes the element from the tab order, which can help prevent users from tabbing to things like decorative or hidden elements. And positive values like one through three let you manually set a custom order, but use these with caution as they will override the natural flow and that can get confusing fast. The best practice is to stick with the default tab order as much as possible and only use custom values when absolutely necessary, like fixing a flow issue in a modal or if you have a custom navigation. If the tab order jumps around unexpectedly or skips important elements, it can create a frustrating experience for users and can make your site feel broken or inaccessible. At this point, you probably realize how all of these small details make a huge impact in how your site appears in search results and how people judge what's on the page. So make sure to take a few extra seconds to write your page titles, descriptions, and URLs with intention. In the next lesson, we'll move beyond individual pages and take a look at site-wide settings and global accessibility tools inside Framer, including how to set language, how to make sure your site respects user preferences, and more. See you in the next lesson.